lying in a pool of his own blood, urine, feces, and brain matter. It suddenly occurred to Mr. Guthrath Fatrol for the first time that his considerable propensity towards impatience may have had a considerable effect on his quality of life. Just before he died, he smiled at the irony that it was only now, in the last moments of his agonizingly painful and entirely avoidable death, that he finally understood the meaning of the phrase, good things come to those who wait. Then the blood filled his eyeballs. He soiled himself for the final time, and everything went black. It was a day like any other at 13 Mount Pleasant Gardens when Guthrat Fatrol arose from his bed in a distinct state of irritability. Uh, come on, get in. Get your foot in there, you bastard. Of course, it would not have felt distinct to him so much as a general feeling of discontent. Which again would not have felt all that distinct given that Mr. Fatrol's natural disposition was towards such a feeling. The source of impatience this day, as opposed to any other, was that a parcel had not arrived. Despite years of resisting push notifications to upgrade to a Congo Primo account, Mr. Patrol had finally done so, on the explicit understanding that his compressed gas keyboard cleaning product would arrive the next day. However, this had not been the case. It had been over three days now since his order had been placed, and despite numerous attempts to find an actual, actual phone, phone number, number and speak to actual an actual person, person, he had been consistently directed to an online AI chatbot, which he declined to use on the grounds he had seen the Terminator movies. And we all know what happened there. Had he been even slightly less impatient, he may have discovered that at the bottom of a page, hidden in tiny text at the end of an intentionally confusing and convoluted menu system, there was, in fact, an actual telephone number. And this would have put him through to an actual person named Hamish McDougall, who would have been delighted to receive his call, given that most of his days were spent in a deep, unshakable sadness, waiting for someone to find the number and call. But Mr. Guthrat Fatrol didn't have time for that. Mr. Guthrat Fatrol was a terribly busy man whose concentration and time were required in the shed where he paced around waiting for the compressed gas keyboard cleaner to arrive. After a moment of intense but fleeting pain, he hurried to the door, only to find that he had narrowly missed the postman. We tried to deliver your package, but you weren't at home. It'll now be sent to your local depot. Although the local depot was only two roads away, Mr. Patrol believed he had already waited long enough for his compressed gas keyboard cleaner, so he hurried out only to see the postman's little van trundling off down the street and taking a right onto Lower Mount Pleasant. Mr. Patrol raced up to the top room from where he had a good vantage point, and as he anticipated, there was the postman. Hey! Where's my package? Hey! Due to the proximity of package? Lower Mount Pleasant and the impressive carry Where of Mr. Patrol's sonorous baritone, the postman heard hey! his complaint. Where's my package? But Mr. Patrol had waited long enough. Oi! Instead of taking the slow and cumbersome stairs, he decided he would slide down the drain pipe, scale his back fence and then Mrs. Cunningham's, and get the package himself. Bollocks! I'm coming over. However, 
In his haste, he forgot that he had been too impatient to wait for the dim-witted millennial at the hardware store checkout. Instead of buying the proper masonry screws, he used ones he had at home. That, as it turned out, was not sufficiently strong enough to bear the weight of Mr. Patrol's recently increased load. Itself an additional consequence of impatience, having given up cooking in exchange for Deliver Me You. Give me that. Had Mr. Patrol not been so impatient, he may have found the telephone number that would have connected him to Hamish McDougall and discovered that he had not, in fact, purchased Congo Primo due to his sticky return key not confirming the upgrade. He may also have put together his IKEA bookshelf correctly and so not tripped and not missed the postman. And had he had more patience, he may have inspected himself more thoroughly and so avoided being ever so slightly blinded by a microscopic splinter. And had he done that, he may have seen the loose screws sticking out from behind the pipe. But Mr. Patrol was not a patient man, and he had waited for his compressed gas keyboard cleaner long enough. In the end, it was a simple matter of physics that killed Mr. Patrol. It was the gravity of the Earth, and of his own impatience that caused his fall towards the cold and unaccommodating concrete ten feet below his upstairs window. And it was this which, of course, ultimately resulted in his agony. What the hell are you doing? Who? Me? Yes, you. Well, uh, that's the end. No, it's not. That was the first draft, you moron. Oh. OK, well, let's get on with it, shall we? Ain't got a day, you know? Yes. Of course. Make it snappy. <clears throat> Sorry. Despite breaking both ankles, his C3, 4, and 5, T2, and L4 vertebrae, rupturing his spleen, and unbeknownst to him, already dying from a slow, leaking brain injury. Really? Yes, apparently so. Shit happens. Despite all this, Mr. Patrol miraculously managed to drag his mangled body across the lawn and hoist himself over Mrs. Cunningham's face, only to land on his face, smashing all his teeth out and biting his tongue in two. <laughs> Nevertheless, he continued on, reaching her conservatory just in time to see the postman heading back to his own house. Compressed gas keyboard cleaner shaped package in tow. Due to Mr. Patrol's bedraggled appearance, Mrs. Cunningham had mistaken him for one of the crackheads from the local trap house, trying to steal her jewels yet again, and having had... Wait, enough of this nonsense! ...had just recently purchased a firearm, which the postman had just delivered for just such matters. And so, in the end, it was a simple matter of physics that killed Mr. Patrol, the gravity of his own impatience, and the 2,000 joules of kinetic energy, causing the momentum of the buckshot to rip through his already weakened skull and shred his brains to bits as he tried to beg for mercy from the trigger-happy and justice-seeking Mrs. Cunningham. And it was this, of course, that ultimately resulted in his agonizingly painful and entirely avoidable death.